Hi and welcome to Game Creation. So today we're looking at creating our dialogue box. So what we're going to do is portion a, bot a, a section of the bottom of the screen and have like a, a kind of background and then put a string object on top. Um, so really today's video is all about how we get that to show up um, because you'll find that we'll code it and it won't might not show up but we'll see. So let's get to it. Okay, so what I've done is I've opened up our previous uh, one. So if I run, it's exactly the way we were before. So what I want to do is go into it. And let's start by creating that active. And this is going to be kind of the background. Uh, so I want this all to be the same color. So what I do is double click on it. And I want to press Control and A to highlight all of it, delete all of it, and then get our fill tool. Um, and we want something that's kind of different to the other colors on screen. We'll change that later on, but for now that'll do. And we want it to come up at the bottom of the screen here, like so. And we can check the um, size of the frame. So the size of the frame is um, 760 wide. And so if I click on this active uh, and go to the right one, which one is it? Where am I? Uh, the first one, and as I say, I never remember which ones these are. Uh, oh, I have to actually click on it. There we go. Um, and so we want it uh, was it 960. And I want to double click on it. I actually find it easier putting the hotspot at the uh, top right for these. And so I can place it easier. So the X coordinate is just zero. Um, now, I want to try and get that down so it's at the bottom of the screen. I could use maths for that. And actually, let's let's make it a bit simpler. So the height, instead of 103, let's make that 100. And all I need to do now is just see the frame. The frame height is 960, so it should be at 860. It's nowhere near that. Ooh, oh, I've read the wrong one. It's 540. Yeah, no, 960. The height is 960. And so this one, uh, no, the height can't be 96, I'm an idiot. <laughs> height is 540, there we go. So it should be 440. There we are. There we go. So we know that works perfectly. It's absolutely spot on for that. Okay, and we want to put a string object on top of it. So if I'm a little bit more successful at that, and just put a string object there and to make it a bit bigger. So, let's see what 20 looks like. Normally you want three lines of text to be visible. That's normally the kind of sweet spot. So if I go in and just type. So if you click on this bit, it gives you a bit more room. And I'm just going to Control C, Copy, Control V, and just copy a load of that rubbish. So let's move that so there's three on on the screen. We might want to make that a bit smaller to give us a bit bit more room. So we could go for 18. That seems to be nicer. And we can shrink that a little bit. And we might want to do it more precise than that. But for now that'll do. Um, and what I want to do is right click, align object in frame and I want it horizontal center. So what that does um, is click team works out where the center is and it just centers this box nicely in the middle there. Um, so that works perfectly. And leave a little bit at the side and leave a little bit at the top and bottom. Maybe I can move it up a little bit, leave similar spacing. Okay, so let's clear out the garbage text we put in there. So we don't need all of that just leave it a text. That'll, that'll do for now. Excellent. Now, if I run that now, what do you think is going to happen? Yep, it doesn't show up at all. Now, the reason for that is all of these actives here, including the player, but all the tiles, are actually getting created after that's created. Because that's on our screen, that's because that's in the frame, it will draw all these frame bits first. So anything there on the frame, it will draw that first. And then anything in the event editor will be created after that. 
And because the tiles in the background are made after this is created, um, you won't be able to see this because it is there. If I run the application, it is there. Um, it's just underneath all these tiles. So it's very simple to do. And in fact, what I'm going to do is right at the end, just before the dev editor, I'm going to insert a group of events. And this will be the ordering. And it's always wise to do this at the end. I don't mind so much with the dev area, though I might want to put it after the dev area. It doesn't really matter too much. There might be some bits in the dev area that I want to order, but I might order those within the dev area, so I'll leave it there for now. And what I want to say is, at start of frame, I want... Um, and you, you kind of think about it logically, what do you want to be drawn first? Well, I want the background to be drawn first. So what I say is I bring that to front. Now that might seem like it will bring it right the way to the front, and at the moment it will, so you won't even see the player object anymore. But that means that that one's the first thing we're bringing to front, and then we just go, okay, so what do I need next? Well, I need the player next, and so that will bring the player to front. Obviously not. Let's have a think. Um, start a frame. That should bring the player to front not why is that that should bring the player to front because it's bring that to front and then bring that to front I don't really know oh, don't really know why that's not working um, if I remove that that should work fine it's really strange Let's create a new condition, bring that to front there, and then bring that to front there. Does that work? Yeah, that's really weird. It's strange, you should be able to do it on the same uh, event. It should go that one, and then that one. But perhaps it's still drawing, when it gets to here, it's still drawing those tiles. And so yes, it for those tiles that have already been drawn, yes it brings them to front, but maybe it just hasn't got to... It hasn't finished creating them by the time we get to here. So you might need an event saying um, on the tiles, when the tiles are drawn, then um, activate the ordering. In fact, let's try that. This is all part of debugging. So tile creation, so when those are done, so I want ordering inactive. And what I want to say is when the tiles are drawn, so <clears throat> it will go through that loop first. And then when it's done that loop, I want it to activate the ordering. Let's see if that works. Let's see if that works now. No, it doesn't. That's really strange. Um, unless it's not, it's not doing all of these. So maybe if I do an insert and I say, um hmm I don't know. I don't know why that's not doing that. Should bring that to front in order. But it's not. Really weird. But yet, if I do it on a different line, it seems to be fine. That's weird. Okay, so that so I'm going to delete that. Active. Well, there's there's a weird thing, and you'll come across this. And the reason I'm not going to delete this from this video is it's really important to understand that even though some things work all the time and without fail, you'll come across something that just doesn't quite make sense. Because if I do this now with the thing at the bottom, so what I'm going to do is bring the tiles to front, then the player, and then our background for the string. It'll work absolutely fine. So that's really weird. And then we want to bring the string to front, so um, order, bring to front. Now, as, um, as you saw that, I tried to drag this. That bring to front there for the active is not the same as bring to front for string. Like it's really annoying that you can't just drag it in, um, even though they are the same thing. Um, they seem to be a click team 
deals with them separately. That bring to front is not the same as that bring to front. Yet between actives, you can just click and drag them. And let's try that now. That should work perfectly. There we are. So tiles first, then player, then this background bit here, and then this string here. Now, a different way I could do this um, is if I go into the frame, you can actually change the layer. So you could create another layer on top of it, which is way easier um, because it would guarantee that it's always in the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that approach. So new layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag and cut all this. So control uh, X. I say, yeah, I don't mind about losing the events. Go into number two. And then control V. Now I do have to place this, unfortunately. It doesn't place it in the same place, um, which I got that pretty good. And what I'm just going to do is click on this, see where it is. So I have one to the right and is it two up? No, two down. So one to the left and two down. That should be perfect. There we are. Excellent. So what that does now is it guarantees that our dialog box, which we'll always want in front of our player and stuff, will be in front of there. So that works perfectly. And it means we don't actually need the ordering, but I just wanted to show you that you can do it um, without creating another layer. So I'm going to um, delete that for now. I might need that later on um, for when well, I want things on the same layer because they're going to interact with each other, um, but I won't need that for now. But I just wanted to show you the kind of different ways of doing it. So if I run that now, what it will do is it will draw number one, which is all the tiles and stuff, and it will draw number two, the layer two, always on top of it. So layer two cannot be behind layer one. Now, if you get it the wrong way around, you can just click and drag these and just reorder these. They're really useful. You can actually hide them. And um, so say if I wanted, so if I click on here, notice I can't see these anymore. I think if you click this one, it allows you to always see all the objects, which is really handy. So this will only let you see objects on this layer. So my string and my active in the background. This will let you see all the objects you've got, which can get a bit cumbersome. If you've got loads of layers, you don't want to see the um, the objects not on your layer. So I can't really do very much of that because that's on layer one and it's the fourth object. If I click on this, it's layer two and it's the second object, layer two and it's the first object. It's really, really handy, um, this this tool. But I normally switch this on because I don't really want to see them. And you can lock them, bin them, and create new layers. Um, really, really great tool. And it's, it's underused as well. Um, a lot of the projects I see and they're sent to me don't use the layers at all um, when I look through them. Um, so yeah, just useful to know. So if I run this now, works absolutely perfectly. Now you'll notice that it's not where I put it. So I put it at the bottom um, of the screen and yet it's not at the bottom. And the reason for that is our player has already scrolled a little bit due to where the player was created. So if I move the player up to the top, it works perfectly. But if the player moves to the right or moves down, notice the string moves with it, but the active doesn't. And so that's something we can tidy up. So if I click on the string, and I can never remember where this is, um, it will say, as so it displays background, um, follow the frame. So it's uh, this one, I don't know what, yeah, this one here. And it says follow the frame. So if I click follow the frame, when I move around, the um, text box kind of stays put. Um, like within the world, but if I unclick that and if I go to active and I unclick that, it basically means it will always be there, no matter where we've scrolled to, it'll always be at the bottom, which is actually what we want, and that works perfectly. So I've got my dialog box there. Now there's loads more to go, um, but we've actually done some really, really uh, important things. Um, if you notice that if I go full screen, it completely mucks it up, <laughs> really mucks it up. And we'll deal with that on Friday. We'll make all this responsive on Friday. Um, but for now, I am happy. <laughs> so until until tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 7pm UK time. Thank you.